people of God. She's already set the atmosphere. God is in this room. Let's go ahead and give him praise this morning. Oh, we thank you for another day. Come on, people of God. Open your mouth and thank him for another year. If it had not been for God who was on my side in 2018, I don't know if I would have made it this far. Let's make it sound like heaven in this place. You can stand there with your arms folded. You can stand there with your arms by your side. But I tell you, you don't want the time to come when you can't worship God, when you can't thank God, when you don't have the activity of your limbs anymore. So while you got them, let's go ahead and throw our hands up as a sign of surrender. And we say, thank you, Jesus. You've been so good. You've been so kind. Oh, we worship you, oh God. Nobody greater than you. The soul says, our Father, all of heaven roars your name. We're going to make it sound like heaven today, eventually in this place. Come on, people of God, we worship you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, God.
the name. Draw the name with your glory. Your glory. Shaking up. Shaking up the earth. Can you hear it? It's the sound of heaven. The sound of heaven touching earth. The sound of heaven touching earth. Now let's go ahead and make it sound like heaven in the room. I don't know, but my Bible tells me that heaven's going to be a little louder. Heaven, my Bible tells me that the angels are rejoicing in heaven right now. Let's make it sound like heaven in this place right now. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and tell him, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If it had not been for you on my side, I thank you, Jesus. The devil had an assignment over your life in 2018, but I thank you, Jesus. I made it. Anybody make it? Anybody victorious? Cancer didn't succeed. Oh, God. Come on, let's go to every praise. Ain't nobody been through nothing. Ain't nobody been through nothing. Ain't nobody been through nothing. Every praise. Come on and put your hands together. This is a familiar song to everybody. Put your hands on it. Let me hear everybody say every praise. Every praise to our God. Every word. Every word of worship. With one accord. To our, God. to our God. Come on, sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah. Glory hallelujah. It's to our God. To our God. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. It's to our God. It's to our God. Take me higher. Every praise. Every praise. It's to our God. Every word. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. To our God. Come on, open your mouth, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, Glory, hallelujah. it's to our God. To our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to.
every praise, 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 when you see me shouting, that's my praise, every praise, when you see me dance, that's my praise, every praise, when you see me crying, that's my praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, it's to who? It's to our God. Now come on and give him one. Come on and give him one. Come on and give him one. Every praise is to our God. praises in the house this morning lift your hands and shout hallelujah somebody say thank you we're grateful this morning for you that have come out to worship the Lord with us this is a day the Lord hath made let us be glad and rejoice therein I don't know about you but I've chosen to rejoice today amen God's been good to us all week amen and now it's time for us to worship him and to praise him my wife Charlotte Amen. At this time, we'd just like to welcome those of you that maybe this is the first time you've been here as a guest. And if you're a first-time guest, just kind of wave your hand. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We had a special guest. Our speaker's wife, Sister Dion Green, is her first-time guest, so we thank God for her. Elder and Sister Dennison are back in the house today. We thank God for them being with us. This And also Ariel. Don't want, we don't want to forget Ariel. But to all of our visitors, we just like to say praise the Lord and welcome to God's house church. We pray that you felt welcome when you came through the door. But if not, this is a formal greeting to let you know you're always welcome here at God's house where everybody is somebody and Jesus Christ is Lord of us all. And as you've already experienced, this is a church that believes in worshiping and praising our Lord our Savior, for He's King of Kings, He's Lord of Lords, and He is worthy of all praise. So we're asking you to join in as we lift up the King of Glory. And if you'd like to know more about this church, please talk to one of the elders after the morning message. Again, not only are you welcome on Sundays, but this is an invitation for you to come back and be part of all of our weekly services. And for those of you that might be looking for a good church home, check us out. Sister Nadine. Bienvenidos, hermanas y hermanos. Estamos tan agradecidos que ustedes están aquí hoy con nosotros celebrando a Jesucristo. También los queremos invitar el miércoles a las 7 de la tarde para nuestros estudios bíblicos. Que tengan buen día y acuérdense que Dios es amor. Amen. Amen. Wow. Also, we have a special guest, Brother Benjamin. He's a writer. He's a producer. Uh, Benjamin, stand up. Amen. Very gifted. His mother was a tremendous artist. Glad to have you back. He'll be with us for a few days. But again, the emphasis of the service is worship. We come to worship the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. God bless you now.
Well, bless the Lord. Behind that great singing, I know that I can make it. It's a great pleasure today to have one of our former pastors with us. He was with us for several, several years. He did a great job here, him and his wife. God saw fit to move them to another part of the vineyard, to Oceanside, California. There they're doing a work for the Lord. He has his very lovely wife. She's one of our pastors to Amber and Brian Dennison. Let's give God a hearty amen for him and a hand clap. Come on at. Thanks, Bishop. Praise the Lord. I just want to um, give honor to God for bringing us safely from California. We went through the snow uh, to be here with y'all today, but to hear the choir singing and to be with y'all just warms our heart, and I know it warms the Lord's heart. Uh, we're excited to hear the word today, the message today. We came because we want to um, celebrate here with you all uh, just the goodness of the Lord and uh, give you a report of what we're doing in California. We uh, were sent out there four and a half years ago, and as you can see, Ariel's growing up to be a beautiful young lady, and we're so proud of her. Um, and what we're doing out there now is we're just uh, doing evangelism. We're doing television evangelism, and I've been uh, speaking with Bishop, and uh, we've been reaching uh, the North County of San Diego with a new show called Real Hope with Brian Dennison, and we're sharing the love of Jesus Christ on air. And not only that, we've been able to share it with over 146 countries um, through YouTube, and we've been seeing people give their lives to the Lord um, through online evangelism. So there's a great work, but we always uh, can find you all on Facebook, and when our hearts need warmed, we uh, can hear the choir singing and Bishop preaching uh, on Facebook. So keep doing what you're doing. We love you all. Um, I want to pass it to my beautiful wife. Just what he said. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you for praying for us. We'll continue to pray for y'all. We love y'all so much. Bishop, First Lady Shelby, we love y'all. Thank you. Let us say amen again. Wow. A great couple doing a great work. We're great members here. You know, sometimes you lose the best. But God has a, another place in the vineyard for them. Our speaker is coming. But before he comes, I want to just emphasize watch night service we're going to have here. We've got a tremendous service planned for us. But after service... I have prepared something very special. Everybody knows I'm a gourmet cook. And I'm noted for my biscuits that I make. I make homemade biscuits from scratch. I'm not going to tell you my recipe handed down through 10 generations. When you, when I bake them and I, they're so light. I'm not going to prepare none for watch night service because the fact is too many people here. But we'll have something besides that. We're going to have grits. We're going to have bacon. We're going to have sausage. We're going to have ham. And someone, I'm going to have some Simon croquettes too for special guests. We'll have potatoes. We're going to have a waffle stand. We'll get your waffles and chicken, all kinds of juice. And everything is free. Watch night service starts at 10 o'clock. We're going to praise and preach the new year in. Then right after, we're going to go over into our fellowship hall to holds about three or 400, and everything will be ready, and you can eat all that you want and go home and stay up all night long because you ate too much. But we want you here for watch night service, so you can bring anybody. Tell your friends, but be here for watch night service. It affords me a great pleasure today to present our speaker. He's my friend. But more than that, he's a man of God. He's an accomplished musician. He's a preacher, teacher par excellent. He knows the word. I, I've been around the word for many years, and I know those that know the word and can preach the word. I told him in the office, I said, let God use you. Whatever God wants you to say, say. We don't want to shackle you because we need the word. How many want a word from God today? Amen. Now, he's coming as an evangelist today. And I'm a preacher, I kind of preach, teach. He may jump up on the organ, run around, but whatever he does, I said it's okay. But before he comes, I'd like for his wife to stand up. Lady, amen. Wonderful, wonderful, but God, her dad's a great preacher too. 
Would you stand on your feet right now and receive our speaker, my friend. He goes to New Destiny Fellowship. There he pastors there with Bishop um, Weeks. He's coming now. I want you to point your hand this way as he comes and say, Pastor Green, preach the word. Give God a hand clap for his man, sir. We certainly do give honor to the Spirit of the Lord this morning and to your very fine pastor, my friend and a father in the gospel, Bishop Michael Shelby. Let's put our hands together for him. And to the one and only Lady Shelby. Let's give God praise for her. For all the years that I've known her, I, I, she always greets with a smile and she's very authentic. And I appreciate that. I appreciate Pastor Damon Shelby. Let's put our hands together for him and his lovely wife. Amen. We thank the Lord for Pastor Vester and his, and his lovely wife as well. Uh, Lady Sonora, they have been par excellent, making sure I want it for nothing. Thank you so much. I mean, even down to my, my seltzer water. And so she made sure everything was good. I, I appreciate her. I appreciate your kindness. As I travel around the country and go different places, the, everybody doesn't have the spirit of excellence. And when you find a place that has a spirit of excellence, you need to praise God for it. And I praise God because that speaks to your leader. And I thank God for you all. Give, just give yourself a hand this morning. <clears throat> all right, I'm going to go to work. Uh, I'm going to ask you to get your Bibles, if you would, and uh, go to the book of Judges chapter 7. I want to thank God especially for my, my rib. Thank God for my, my rib, my God-sent rib. You can have a rib, but if it ain't God-sent, it's going to hurt you. So I thank God for my lovely wife. She was able to travel with me. Uh, and come and she she was praying she was fasting on my behalf this week so that I would be able to be used of God and I'm gonna tell you something it makes a difference it makes a difference to have somebody by your side who has your back amen all right let's get down to this Judges chapter 7 when you have it indicate that by saying amen <clears throat> starting with verse number one early in the morning Jerubbabel that is Gideon and all of his men camped at the spring of Herod. The king, I'm sorry, the camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the hill of Mor. And I might be reading a little bit different because I'm reading out the NIV, NIV, but when I quote it and talk, I'm going to vacillate between King James Version and both. The Lord said unto Gideon, you have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands uh, or Israel would boast against me. My own strength has saved me. Now announce to the army, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left while 10,000 remained. But the Lord said to Gideon, there are still too many men. Take them down to the water and I will thin them out for you there. Because see, some of us got too many folk around us. If I say this one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told him, separate those who lap the water with their tongues as a dog laps from those who kneel down to drink. 300 of them drank from cupped hands, lapping like dogs. And the rest got down on their knees to drink. The Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 men that lapped like a dog, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the others go home. I want you to go down to verse number 17, if you would. Watch me, he told me, follow my lead and do what I and when, do what, follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. When I and all that who are with me blow the trumpets from all around the camp, blow yours and shout for the Lord and for 
Gideon. Isn't that interesting? I want to talk to you for a few moments from this subject. Get up. Y'all, y'all, y'all sounded a little, little dry on that. If, I said, they said they were going to put it up on the screen somewhere. You'll see it up there. The key verses is uh, number, number seven. Uh, let me see what I put it up here. I'm sorry. Number, number, number nine. Number nine. On 7-9. Now the camp of Midian lay below him in the valley. During that night, the Lord God said to Gideon, get up, go down get against the camp because I am going to give it into your hands. <clears throat> now I'm going to say this again, and I want you to get this down in your spirit. I want you to look at somebody next to you and say, neighbor, neighbor. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care how bad you've been feeling. God said, get up. Yeah, y'all, I know y'all not used to, from what I understand, y'all usually don't get no cold weather like this, so y'all still must be thawing out a little bit. But, but do me one more favor before, before you all the way thaw. Just turn to somebody else and tell them, neighbor, God said, get up. All right, let's give God a praise on your way down. It is interesting that <laughs> Many times we find ourselves in precarious situations because as believers, we are chosen by God and God expects us to follow him wherever he goes. It is very important for the mind of the believer to, to be sensitive to the things of the spirit because you can walk with God for a great length of time and then miss it at the end. Paul, the great apostle, wrote over 80% of the New Testament scriptures, he declares to us that he could be a castaway after saving all others. He could himself be left out there. It's interesting that God always ends up rescuing his people out of bondage. Every time you see Israel, Israel is a type of us. We are a type of Israel in that we have been taken from sin, taken from Egypt, ransomed, paid for. By the blood of the lamb. And while we were in bondage, we prayed and cried and asked God to get us out. Okay, y'all not there yet. It's cool. I came to work. It's all right. Many people don't think that they've ever had a past because they've been in church a long time. You've been in church for a good length of time. You got your little two-button suit. You got your little tie. You got your nice dress, you got your hat, you got your pocketbook, you got your shoes matching, you got your stockings matching, and your hair's flipped to the sides, you got your weave dripping, you got everything is right. You know how to walk in, you know how to say praise the Lord, you know you how to say a highly favored, you know how you put your finger up like he's doing, walking across, the, hey, when, when, so you won't excuse everybody. Everybody knows the, the protocol of church, and we act like we've never been in the gutter. Okay, that's cool. The reason why we act like we've never been in the gutter because God has cleaned us up so well that in a church like this, you can't see the pimp from the preacher. Because God knows how to clean you up so well that nobody can see the drug addict from the deacon. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Every now and again, God will remind you or from whence he has called you. I'm reminded that, that, that when I look at the scriptures, I discovered that, that there were people in the Bible who, who had issues. I don't know about some folk as I travel. I don't know how folks act so sedity like they never had issues. They act like they've always taken communion. They act like they've always had honey dripping out the bell. They always, they act like they've got anointing oil for toothpaste. They, they, they always have it together. I've been around preachers that make me itch where I'm not scratching because they're so deep that they act like they've always dotted every I and crossed every T. See people singing and they sing like they just sat down with Gabriel and Michael and orchestrated a cantata. I, 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 I'm amazed at how many people 
forget from whence they've come. That now that you have a few degrees, as many as a thermometer, now you roll your R's and you, you do everything, you say everything well when you speak. But in the back room, you're something else. Israel found themselves in a position, my beloved, that, that, that they kept going back and God will allow you to go back. I know traditional preachers don't preach that, that once God delivers you, you're always free. He saves your soul. But you got to live in this body. And as long as you live in this body, you're going to always have something you've got to fight. I'm bothered. I have to confess on this wonderful last Sunday of the year. I'm bothered sometimes because uh, I, I don't know what it is that we think that we will not have to fight. We, I need to apologize on half of preachers all around the country that we have taught for years that, 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 that it's all good. We have preached it so well and articulated it so well that when newcomers, new believers, new converts come to church, they are mesmerized by, by what we wear in the spirit and the, the facade that we put on that you can walk with God and everything will always be okay. But saved people get sick. Saved people get divorced. Saved people get cancer. Save people get in car wrecks. Save people lose houses and cars. Save people have addictions while they're singing in the choir. I'm already there. Stay with me. Save people have three and four women that they're married to and nobody knows. Save people. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing, but keep looking straight. Save people have issues. Save people have issues. Save people have tendencies. You, you, you see them one time and they walk a certain way. You see them another time and they got a little sway with them. Save people are not sure what side of the fence they're on. Save people. I'm not against any of it, but we have to paint the picture that, that save folk go through stuff. Israel found themselves constantly going back. God would deliver them and they would slide back. God would bring them out and then they would slide back. And I can't judge them. Can't judge them because, because we're the same way. Because God has been good to us. He's been really good to us. If you think about it, uh, nobody in this room looked like they lost a meal. God's been good to us. You may not have the car you'd want, but you got something. And if you ain't got a car, you're taking the bus. You got a bus pass or car. You, you got something. You may not have all the heat in the house that you want, but you got something. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. You may not have all the suits and ties and the shoes that you're like, but you got something. But God has been good to us. But Israel found themselves in a position, my brothers and sisters, where they were sliding back. Because we have a tendency to fall in love with our past. I reminded the children of Israel, they said, when Moses brought them out, they said, well, you know, it would have been good for us had we stayed in Egypt. Because at least we had leeks and onions. It's amazing how we have cravings for the things that we've been delivered from. You got to watch those cravings. Pregnant women have cravings. You don't know why in the middle of the night they go to rubbing their stomach and they want pickles and ice cream. It's a craving. It doesn't make sense, but it's something they want. They want something that's unorthodox. It's, it's a craving. Somebody shout craving. craving. Everybody up in this piece has a craving. I don't care how good you look. I don't care how many tongues you speak in. You have a craving. You may not tell nobody. You might dance through it. You might preach through it. You might sing through it. But everybody's got a craving. God is not bothered by your craving. He's bothered by how you satisfy it. <laughs> Scripture says they went back and Gideon now is now called to be a deliverer for them. Because the rule is one from among them. Martin Luther King, Dr. King was one from among them. God will always pull up one right out of the midst. The question arises in the church, why did God save me? Perhaps he saved you because you're the deliverer of your household. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. <clears throat> God will save anybody. And the church has to be ready for that kind of move. I came to tear down some walls of tradition that, that, that we have not allowed folks to get really saved because we, let, we have to take you through a whole lot of rituals 
But God is not bothered by the pills you have in your pocket. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. God, see, see salvation is, takes place in a moment. Deliverance takes place during time. You get saved in a moment, but you got to walk this other stuff out. I grew up in the church. I know what I'm talking about. Uh, I, 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 used to, I used to love the old mothers of the church, still do. And, 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 and they gave the image that they always had it together, Bishop. They gave the image. By, back in those days, they had dresses. They used to sweep the floor. They had uh, cotton stockings and, and the whole nine. And they, and they always had a word. They always had a quickening. But I, and, and when I was younger, I was in awe of them, as well as the older men of God. Until I became a pastor and started pastoring some of them that were old enough to be my grandmother, then I discovered that, that they were better at hiding it. And I was amazed that when they came in my office to talk to me, the stuff that they were dealing with, because in my eyes, I only saw them as God, never knowing that un un underneath that swaying dress that hit the floor, there was some other stuff that was swinging that wasn't from heaven. The scripture tells me that Gideon was raised up now and when God chooses him, he says, I, how are you going to use me? I am the least of my family. What could you do with me? Why would you choose me? I have a question. Why not you? How could you use somebody who seems to be insignificantly small? The scripture tells me that while he was out there, the Bible says he was so confused. He was, he was, he was self-doubting. He, he didn't believe in himself. He said, okay, God, if this is really you talking to me, I'm going to set a fleece. So I want you one time, but I want you to let it be wet underneath the wool. And then, then the next time, Lord, I want it to be wet on top of the wool. And by the time he got through, he said, Lord, please, please, please bury me. I, I know, but just, just help me. I, I, I believe you, but I just, I'm just trying to test it to make sure that this is really you. Because I want to make sure that you really called me. I think that's very important. I'm going to be a little pastoral right here. I think it's very important because uh, uh, you need to make sure. I don't know. When I was coming up, Bishop, they said, make your calling. An election show. Uh, you, you need to make sure that God called you. Because when you have to look a demon in the face, you can't say my bishop said. You can't say my credential said. You have to know that you know that God has called you. Many are called. They're the call. But very few folks are chosen. He was chosen, handpicked by God. And the Bible says that while he was there, when we pick it up in chapter number 7, it says that in the morning he camped by the spring. And the scripture says, the Lord said to Gideon, you have too many. Too many. One translation says you have too many for me. <clears throat> oh, you didn't catch that. In other words, God says, I know how many people you have. But in order for me to do what I need to do in your life, you have too many for me. In other words, I don't like who you have running with you. In order for me to do what I need to do in your life, Gideon, I've got to clear some people out of your life. Oh, you're not going to say nothing to me. Okay, uh-huh. He, he, he says, you've got too many for me. In other words, he says, the reason why you have too many, he says, because if I let you get the victory, Gideon, with the number of people that you have, then you, your people will say it was by their own hand that they won. You know what I'm talking about. Don't look at me like I'm crazy because that's why God lets you go down. I know people talk about that God lifts you up, but I want to tell you about the God that will let you go down. I want, I want to talk about the God, not the God that pays all your bills. I want to let you know about the God that will everything get, let everything get cut off and then say, trust me. Well, y'all ain't going to say nothing this morning. Okay, uh-huh. I, I want to talk to you about the God, not the God that healeth thee. I know he does that and he will. But I want to tell you about the God that lets you walk through the process. Because he's got to take you through the process so that you know in your spirit that he alone is God. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. God says, Gideon, you have too many men for me. In other words, I don't like your crowd. You'd be surprised how many folks are sitting in this church who can't function without your posse. As long as you got your crew with you, I can pray. I'm not against prayer partners. We talk to everybody. I got my prayer partner. I got my prayer crew. My prayer is cool. But the truth of the matter is, your prayer partner needs prayer. What you going to do when your prayer partner needs deliverance? We put too much emphasis on prayer partners. Nothing wrong with them. But everybody has to have their own relationship with God for themselves. Your prayer partner can't be with you every day. Even as a pastor. Hey, but so be, oh, if I could just get in touch with my pastor. Oh, if I could get in touch with my pastor. Oh, if my pastor could pray for you. Your pastor got to go to sleep. Your pastor can't be there for everything. See, see, what we have not learned is that we have raised a generation of people who don't know how to talk to God for themselves. And then we shackle the pastor down so that they have to satisfy all the needs as if they were God. And then when they don't do what you want them to do, when you want them to do it, you want to kill them and say they don't love you. No, they're trying to teach you to grow your hips up. I wonder if I'm helping somebody. He said, get in, you have too many people for me. Take them down to the water. Take them down to the water. It's interesting, Pastor Damon, why would he say take them down to the water? Was he going to baptize them? No, why? why would he say take them down to the water? I figured he would say take them to the temple. Take them up to Shiloh, take them up to Jerusalem, take, but take them down to the water. Because the water in the scripture represents the spirit. And the spirit moved <laughs> over the face of the waters. Enough to stand in, enough to wait. Water up to your ankles, water up to your knees. Come on, somebody, get in your Bible with me. Uh, see, when you see water in the scripture, it represents the spirit. God said, take them down to the water. In other words, interpretation, take them down to the spirit so that I can show you who you have running with you. So he takes them down to the water. And when he gets down there, they get down and God says this. And this is something that leaders need to know. This is something lay folks need to know. Everybody say everybody. everybody. He said, watch how they drink. Watch. As a leader, you got to watch. You can't, be, you can't be speaking all the time. You got to watch. The Bible said, watch as well as pray. He said, watch how they drink. So Gideon stands on the side and he sees them, one group of men get down on their knees. And when they get down on their knees, they put their face down in the water. Another group grabs the water, brings it up to their mouth, but keeps their eyes in front of them. See, there's a difference between those that lap like a dog and those that behold their own face. Because people who put their face down in it want to see their own reflection. They're full of pride and they're concerned about their own self. But when you bring the water to you, I'm going to bring the water to me, but I'm never going to take my eyes off the vision that God gave me. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. He, he said... Now, all those that lapped water like a dog, he said, separate them and tell all the fearful ones and all the rest of them to go home. One of the things, Bishop, that I, that I have found out, and it's in every church. I don't care you go to the biggest mega church all the way down to the corner store. All of them. Every church got trouble. 
Y'all ain't going to say nothing. I'm not going to call those names because we live streaming. I don't want anybody to try to sue me. But every church has got trouble. I don't care what their name is, they got trouble. And, and, and the reason why we are seeing ministries struggle is not because God is not God. Is that sometimes we are enamored with numbers. Sure, we like to have a lot of folk fill up the house of God. Yes, God can do that. But God sometimes scales things back so that they can spring forward. I had this in the house we have, I, I, I picked up a few plants. I used to watch my mother with her snake plants and all these plants. So I picked up a few plants and got me some pottery stuff and put it together. And I didn't water a couple of them some, one time and got a little dry. And my wife says to me, she said, I don't fool with the plants. That's your thing. I don't do that. That's you. But she came in there one day. I guess I didn't move fast. She came in there and she got some scissors. And she went and got to the plant and she cut the brown part of the leaf off. Now, I remember, I didn't say nothing, but I remember my mother used to stand in front of the window and cut all the dead stuff off the plants. She cut it off, and the reason why she cut it off is so that new growth can come. She, you, you didn't, she didn't throw the whole plant out. She just cut. You're, you're not going to say nothing. God sent me here to tell y'all he's about to cut you. He's got to cut. And the reason why he's got to cut, it's not because you're not doing what you need to do or that you're not called or that you're not anointed. But he says you have too many for him. Well, what, is the, what does that mean? Well, wait, wait, wait a minute, preacher. Well, God says I have too many for me. Don't you see this church? We got some chairs that need to be filled. We got some rooms that need to be filled. God is not concerned about that. He said before I can fill it, I've got to kill it. In other words, I've got to prune back some people and some things so that I can now bring in what I want. You're not going to say nothing. That's why some people left your life. Look how quiet it is. You can hear rat licking nice. Look. look. God will move people out of your life. Oh, I can't, I can't live without you. Oh, I got to have you. I can never, I, if it wasn't for you. See, that sounds like God. And God will never let you praise somebody else. So when you start praising somebody else, God will start knocking people out the way. God will prune back. I'm going somewhere. Just give me a minute. So scripture says, Gideon now takes the, the 300 men that he has and he arms them with pitchers lanterns, torches, and God uses him. But the reason why God had to raise him up, Pastor, is because every time the children of Israel got their harvest, the Midianites would come and snatch it. That sounds like us. Every time you get a piece of change, here comes something to snatch it. I mean, every time you just built up a little reservoir of something and here comes a situation. Well, then, let me share, share something with The reason why sometimes there's a snatching is because we're sitting, and I love this, God's house. But we don't honor the God of the house. It's about to get real thick, but hold on. It's a dangerous thing for you to come in God's house and eat at his table and then belch in his face. It's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing for God to bless you on your job. Give you a good job. Give you benefits. And even if you ain't got none, he keeps you breathing. And then for God to bless you and then you come in his house, God's house, and you eat of the table of the Lord and never honor him with your substance. So then what God does, beloved, God will now let the enemy come in 
and do exactly what you're doing to him. So when you don't honor God and, and you snatch from God, God said, well, now I'm going to let the enemy snatch from you. Because it's nothing like a mirror to show you how ugly you really are. The Midianites kept coming and snatching their harvest, snatching their grain, snatching their cattle. And the Bible says that the Israelites, children of Israel, then they started crying. Oh, I guess you will cry when it gets bad enough. See, some people have to go to rock bottom before they say, God, help. I'm sorry. Some people got to get locked up for, for 10 years before they say, okay, God, I understand you mean business. And the scripture says that they cried unto God. And God answered. I came to tell you this morning, God has heard your cry, but before he answers you fully, he wants to make sure that you're not following him for the fishes and the loaves, but that you're following him because you love him. Yeah. Oh, y'all don't want to say nothing to me. <clears throat> when I was coming up in church, mm -hmm, uh, uh, we used to sing songs that I love the Lord. And we, we would sing, we would sing songs that, that really meant something that, 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 that I, I I've never seen the righteous forsaken and, or see breaking bad. We used to sing songs like, the Lord is good to me. Oh, the Lord is good to me. We, we would sing songs that, that ministered to where we were. But how can we sing in a strange land? How can we sing the song of the Lord in the strange land? Because if you sing the Lord is good to you, it would be an indictment on you. Because how could he be so good to you and you not be good to him? Now stay with me. I know y'all want me to hit E flat. Nah, I could do all that, but hold up. Because it's important for me to hit you with this the way God wants it done. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm beyond the days of trying to excite folk. Here's the truth. Don't worry about the baby. It's all right. That stuff like that happens when I preach this. All kind of stuff manifests. It's cool. Don't worry about that. Here's the deal. God stripped Gideon of all his support because God said I don't want anybody getting my glory he'll even strip you of your family members he'll make you the black sheep of the family the outcast all of a sudden now they don't want to talk to you they don't want to be around you and the reason why is God says you put too much trust in them Oh, auntie, I can't do nothing without my auntie, my auntie Sherilyn. Auntie Sherilyn, every time I got in trouble, she brought me groceries. Every time my car payments due, auntie Sherilyn came in. But auntie Sherilyn can't heal you. So God, what he does, is he says, okay, since you like auntie Sherilyn more than you like me, I'm going to move auntie Shirley out the way. He says something like this in the scripture. He said, if I be your God, if I am your father, where is my honor? That's Malachi. How can you call me your daddy and not honor me? Uh, I got, we got six kids. How, how, how could anybody of them walk in the house and not say, hello, daddy, hello, mama? How could you sit at my table and eat my food and not say thank you? Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. God said, where is my honor? You put the job before me. So you used to come to church all the time. You was in church every time the door was open. That's because you used to love the Lord. And then once he blessed you with the job, now you're working so much that you can't even honor God. So God says, oh, let me, let me do this. Let me take the job from you because you were praying and fasting more before you had the job. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. When, when God was blessing you, you were tithing, you were giving, you were, you were bringing your seed, dancing, bringing your seed, laying at the altar. I'm tithing, I'm giving my offer. You were doing what God told you to do. You were giving your 10%. And then, as God increased you on your job and you got raises and you got promotions and then money started trickling from everywhere, then you scaled back. You still kept it at, at a lower rate. You didn't increase when God increased you. So God says, uh, uh, I, I had an issue like this, Bishop, one time. I had, had one, one person, well, they ain't going to see it. They, they, I had one person 
who had trouble tithing. Sometimes you get in the valley, your faith gets weak, no problem. Difficult tithing. And so they said, uh, I can't afford to tithe and do like I used to do. And but when I was praying for them to get the job, they got the job. When I was praying for them that they got increase, I prayed for them to get the increase. I said, so now let me pray for you that God demotes you. I prayed for the increase. The increase came. Now let me pray that God demotes you back down to where your faith is so you can tithe on that level. Because, see, sometimes God has to take you down. See, in order for you to mature, matriculate up to the next level, your spiritual maturity has to come up too. You can't be acting like a first grader in college prep classes. See, everybody wants to be great. Everybody wants to be anointed. Everybody wants the calling of God. The hallelujah. Everybody wants all the great grandeur. I want to be prophetic. I want to be this. I want to be all that. I want God to use me. But God tests you by his spirit. How do you respond? To the water. How do you respond to my spirit? Are you cold? When I speak to your spirit and say, this is what I want you to do. Go pray for Agnes May Lynn. Will you get up and go out your bed and pray for them? Or are you too stuck up? Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Okay. Look, somebody say, get up. The problem is, we like where we are. We have fallen in love with our past. And so the Bible says, I'm almost done. The Bible says that the Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 men that lapped, will I save you and I will give you the Midianites. Wait a minute. I don't have to work for that? No, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give them to you. But I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. See, sometimes Bishop, we, we have put our life and scribe. I'm not telling you the Bible tells you about a vision. Without a vision, you, the, the people will perish and, and write the vision down, make it plain so he that readeth it can run. I know the scripture got it backwards and forth, but, but, but sometimes we write our plan for our life and we don't include God in it. God said, Gideon, you have too many for me. Get thee up. So I came this morning to tell you, God said, get up. Now, I know y'all waiting for the A flat. And you want me to do all that, but that's not where it is today. It's not where it's at. That's because I'm doing surgery right now. See, the get up is a mindset. You know, if there's a woman, oh, there it is, I got it, thank you, Lord. If there's a woman who's sitting in her house with her husband or lover, and he is abusive and beating her, smacking her around, which incidentally is ungodly, and there comes a moment in her life, at some point, She says, I had enough of this. Now, she, it may take a while because she's got to get some courage. But she's going to fix up some kind of brew stew, something. She's going to do something to help the situation now. She's going to have to call a little backup, get some help. She's going to to, to talk to a few people and and, and she's got to get it together because, because she says, I have enough, and particularly if there's children involved, she says, oh, wait a minute, no, 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 I got to stay around for my babies. And so what she'll do is she'll handle it and say, this is enough. It's a mindset that you say, I'm tired of being tired. You have to get tired of being in what you're in. Okay, let me hit it right quick. You, you, you got to be tired from jumping from one bed to another. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming for you. Just keep looking straight. When are you going to learn that sex in your way is not going to satisfy you? I didn't say it wouldn't feel good. The Bible says sin is pleasure before season. But the problem is you don't know when your season is up. (laughs) 
How many Uncle Larry's can you have coming over? And Auntie Macbeth's. Everybody's your auntie and uncle. I'm not judging you, but I want to paint this picture for you. Because you said you belong to God. And I'm not saying that you won't get dirty when you walk with God. Oh, I've been dirty, baby. I've been dirty. I've been so dirty that bleach wouldn't help. But thank God for Jesus. I'm not talking from a high position that I've never been where you are. That's why I can talk about it because I understand it. But you got to get tired of being in what you're in. Because God wants more for you and you need to want more for yourself. What do you get tired of being high? How, 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 how many more joints is it going to take to satisfy you? You'd be surprised how many folks sit up in the church and are high. Oh, okay. You, you, okay. Y'all want to go there? Thank you. I'm going to go right there with you. Oh, no, you, you, don't, you don't use the pharmaceuticals that, that are on the corner, by the corner bodega. No, you don't use those pharmaceuticals. You, you, use, you, use the, the, you use the prescription drugs, the Oxycontin. You, you use the painkillers. Ain't you ain't got no pain nowhere. You just, you just like the feeling. Oh, what a feeling. You like, you like the feeling. No, 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 you don't, you don't, you know, no, 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 you, you know, it's not the problem. You have a problem. You, you're drinking codeine. It ain't for your cough. It ain't because you've got respiratory problems and you got a little cough. No, 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 you just, you, you need some codeine in you just so it can numb you so you can get through your day at your job. You ain't sick. You got to get tired. So I hear you. I'm in the spirit now. And those of you who don't know me, I go into the prophetic. I'm already there. So if you wait, I'm already there. Uh, uh, some, some folk, some folk are, have, have issues, have, have, have issues because you've been hurt by men. And so you say, I'll never love a man again. So you go get a woman. You're saved. But you got a woman. And you're a woman. And because you don't want to be hurt by a man again. You stay with a woman and you show up like, this is my sister in the Lord. <laughs> but she's not your sister. She's your mister. And God told me to tell you, get up. Sometimes you're leading and you're bleeding at the same time. Preaching love, but don't have none. Preaching mercy, but don't have none. Preaching faith, but don't have none. Singing the songs of Zion, playing the songs and the chords, but, but don't have it. Got your hand behind your back. Good morning. Welcome to God's house. Welcome to God. And, and, and struggling. Get up. Sometimes you're blaming others for where you are. When all you need to do it's good. I'm reminded there's a little story uh, about the pig and the lamb. And the pig uh, walks over this little bridge and falls into the mud. He falls in the mud. He rolls over on his back. Oh, oh this feels good. Oh, this is good mud. He's in his element. The lamb walks across the bridge, slips, falls in the mud, but shakes himself and screams ah! because he doesn't like what's on him. It's the nature of a pig to want mud. It's the nature of a lamb to be clean. And God told me to tell you, are you going to lay in the mud? Or are you going to shake yourself? Lord, help me. Everybody lift your hands up towards heaven. 
Shout, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Here we go. Now, when he gets them down to the brook and they drink, he separates them and he uses the 300. This is what the Lord said. Bishop, he said, to tell you that you're right on schedule. Don't be dismayed by what you see. That what's going on is of me. I am pruning back your house. I'm cutting back. I'm getting rid of folk that ain't supposed to be here. So don't let your eyebrows go down and your heart get heavy when people walk away. Because I have to clear some room for who's coming. Maybe, maybe this, let me, let me, let me hit this this way. Y'all still with me? Okay. I, one time, my, one of my, my, my administrators, she's an older mother in the church, and, uh, and I was, I, I had some furniture in my house that I had for a long time in my living room, some furniture in the house. And I had been praying. I said, Lord, I want to get some new furniture. Things was tight. You know, I'm pastoring the church, doing this, doing that. I need some new furniture. I ain't had the money to get it. And I said, Lord, I just need some furniture. I need to switch some things up. And it sure would be nice. I just, my little prayer. And one day, she told me, she said, Pastor, uh, open your front door. Now, I don't play you coming by my house unannounced. I don't do that. But she said, Pastor, open your front door. Now, she was cool with me like that. Her and her husband were cool like that. So, and I opened my door. And there was a furniture truck pulled up to my house. I never told her, never said anything to her, and to her husband. Furniture truck pulled up with all this new furniture. But here's the key. In order for me to receive what was coming in the door, I had to get rid of what was in the house. You've been asking God to give you this and that and bless you with this and that, but you have not cleaned house. So God is not going to come and put a couch on another couch. He's not going to put another bed on top of another bed because then you would be uh, what they call uh, uh, hoarders. Some folks are spiritual hoarders. You just take everything and you don't need it. You just take everything. Look at somebody and say, get up. You say, Pastor, what is what is?" What does all this mean? I'm glad you asked me. The Lord told me to tell you, Bishop, that this house is under construction. It's under construction. This is why we are experiencing, when I say we, I'm talking like I'm part of your church because I'm in here right now. This is why we're experiencing some things that you've never seen before. Anytime God gets ready to do some things in the house, he starts upsetting situations, making people uncomfortable, kind of like how you'll look right now. <laughs> One of the first places that the Lord begins to upset, he will allow, he will allow, somebody say he will allow, he, he will allow, he will allow Satan himself to visit certain areas in the church to cause havoc because it teaches you to pray. And God will stand by and watch to see how you handle it. The first, I don't care what church you go to. I don't care if you go to a Catholic church. I don't care if you go to Presbyterian church. I don't care if you go to Church of God, Church of God and Prophecy. I don't care if you go to church up and down the steps. Whatever church you go to, the first place that always has a problem is the music department. <laughs> the reason why they have a problem. It's because that was Satan's first place. The reason why he attacks the music department is because he knows if I can affect what Bishop said, the worship, then the whole house is affected. You're not going to say nothing to me. I'm a musician. I've been playing since I was four years old. I was a musical director. I went on tour. I've done albums. I've done it so I can talk from this from the ground up. 
I've directed choirs. I've done all that. I know how to do all that kind of stuff. But I'm, I'm going to talk about this for a minute because this is necessary. This is not a paid commercial. Nobody can slip me a note and say, Pastor, preach on this or teach on this. I'm going to tell you what the Lord said. You can do whatever you want to do with it. The biggest problem is ego. Satan said, I'll be like the most high. We as musicians, as singers, have to be careful that we don't steal the glory of God. That if God allows you to sing or preach or teach or play, that it's his gift. And you have to nurture his gift. It is not your gift. He did not give it to you for you. He gave it to you for him. And trust me when I tell you, there are people sitting up under the, the, the bridge that can out-sing you, out-play you, out-preach you, out-teach you. We have to bring harm. Give me, go to A flat if you would, sir. A flat. Start on the A flat. Now get now, okay, now, now, now don't, don't, don't get it. Give me A flat. Now I want you to give me, just give me A flat chord. Straight. Thank you. Now, you hear those notes? That's harmony. That's harmony. Now, I want you to take the A flat, keep the A flat there. I want you to add, I want you to add a B. That's making it minor. And it changed the whole tone. That's the kind of sound you hear in movies and scary movies where the, where the shift changes. Now I want you to take the A flat. I want the B. I want the C. And I want the D. A flat. B. C. D. Go ahead. Now that's discord. That doesn't sound pleasing to anybody. That's what it sounds like when we don't work together. That's not harmony. And it hurts the ears of God because it's not melodious to him because we are not in it together. Thank you. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. God is looking for harmony not just in the choir, in your marriage. All right. go say nothing. In your marriage, he wants harmony. God is expecting you to love your wife as he loves the church and give yourself a ransom. He's expecting you to love your husband. Be faithful to your spouse. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. Put nobody else before your spouse. He's expecting you to pray for one another. See, this is how we keep harmony in the house of God. See, you can't come and do one thing in church and go home and do something else. Somebody say, get up. Some folk are hooked on being sick. In other words, you like the pity. Oh, I'm praying, I'm praying for you, brother. Brother, I'm praying with you. I'm believing God for you. And, and if there's anything I can do, you just, you just love the attention. Ain't nothing wrong with your hips. You just love the attention. Y'all still breathing? Now, when we come to New Year's, we're going to rock it out New Year's. But let me, I got to hit this before I get to New Year's. Why is this important, Pastor Green? Because for where God is taking this church, he can't take the church where he wants to go if these things are not settled. We cannot be professional Christians. We have to show forth the real anointing of God that he's given to us. He didn't save you to sit. He saved you so that you can be an effective the witness for him you're not that anointed that you can't witness to somebody you don't have to do it like I do you don't have to speak in Greek and Hebrew but all you've got to do is share the love of Jesus the way God delivered you tell your testimony tell them how you was freaking Freddy and dirty Dan tell them you don't hear people tell their real testimonies no more Bishop 
They tell the nice ones. The Lord was good to me. He saved me when I was on my way to hell. Well, we all was on our way to hell. But tell how God delivered you. How you were about to blow your brains out. And he stopped the bullet. Tell how you were living a lascivious life. Look it up. Lascivious. No boundaries. Tell, tell how you were living. And God put the brakes on you. And he changed the taste out of your life. And gave you love in your spirit when you couldn't love anymore. Tell your real testimony. All right, now I got to go to work. In my travels here, I said, Lord, what do you want to really say? Because I don't want to just be preaching, preaching to be preaching. And he said, I want you to minister to this house in a very special way. What does get out, get up mean? Why go down to the brook, to the, to the water and be, be, to take the water like a dog? Why, why choose Gideon? Because many of us sitting in the house look at ourselves as being insignificant. And God says, that's the attitude that I need. In other words, I need you to be humble. Not lifted up in pride. Because pride comes before fall. I need you to admit you need me. That you can't do anything without me. I, I, I need you to admit that, God, if you don't fix this, it can't be fixed. If you, if you don't heal, if you don't preach or teach to me or do it, I, it, it can't be done. I need you to admit how much you need me. And that you're not there because of yourself. So with that in mind, he said there's some people that I need to pray for. That I need to speak to concerning some things. And while I do this, there will be some things that happen. You might hear some people shriek. You might see some demons manifest. That kind of stuff happens. Your babies cry. See, the church gets dazed at stuff like that because we don't see it often. Because we're so used to being professional. But God's house is supposed to be a place of deliverance. You're supposed to be able to come in God's house and get free from anything. God, there's not a demon in hell that can hold one of God's children. I'm going to pray for some of you because some of you God wants to heal in your body. You have some oil, sir? I thought he was going, I thought he was going to hoop like they did at the gathering. I thought he was going, he was going, no, nah, I'm not going to do that right now. Because I'm sensitive to know what the Lord has told me to do. And I believe in obeying God. Somebody shout faith. <laughs> There's some of you that God brought before me in your conditions. He spoke to me about you. That he's going to heal and deliver. Now, this part of the service, I need believers. Those that believe God. I will match my faith to your faith. God would not send me through your blizzard, through all this stuff, if he wasn't going to do it. I'm going to pray right now for specific sicknesses, blood disorders. I'm going to pray against cancer. You're going to cast cancer out. I didn't get an amen in the whole building. I don't know anything about you other than you take care of me every time I come here. <clears throat> what I do know, that's what's in your body. It's time for it to come out.
I do know that God is greater than what's going on in your body. Sometimes you are affected because you're on the front line. You've prayed for people in your condition and watched them get well. And this is what you said to God. I'm in your house now. God, I don't mean to be funny, but I've prayed for people with this and watched them get healed. How could you not heal me? Why wouldn't you heal me? I'm faithful in your house. I serve the man of God. I serve your house well. And, and, and Lord, I'm, I'm not begging. I'm not trying to be funny, but how could I pray for other folks with this? And, and, and I stand in need. And you kept on serving. So I speak now to your body. You have no place, cancer, no place in this body. I speak to it to dry up. But honey, come here. I need a praying church, not a spectating one. Put your right hand right on her stomach. I speak now to your female organs. This area of your body. I command it to dry up now. I speak to the blood platelets, the white blood platelets, the red blood vessels, the growths that keep returning. I speak to the bleeding to dry up. In the name of Jesus, I bind and cast out this cancer in the name of Jesus. The blood is against you. I command healing all the way from her toes to her head, through the hairs on her head. I speak to your thyroid, make the proper adjustments. Yes, your kidneys, your liver, your spleen, your stomach, so your appetite will be what it's supposed to be. The shifting, the thickness that comes back into your flesh, the fluctuating in your weight that goes up and goes down, the dizzy spells, I curse it now in the name of Jesus. I command you to be healed by his stripes in Jesus name now 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 here it is I need a worship in church I need a worship in church this is God's house in Jesus name Somebody shout faith. Where's the choir director? Yes. Yes. Where's the choir director? already know what the Lord has asked of you and the kind of vessel that he needs you to be you cannot do it by yourself God says clean up everything 
everything. Everything. I called you to lead. But I have to be able to use your heart. Your heart must be mine completely, not partially. Whatever's on you gets on them. Guard yourself when you come to the house of God. I speak to the little boy that's in you that has not been satisfied since you were 12 years old. <laughs> I speak to the abused boy. that your family don't want to talk about. I speak to that little boy in you and I call that little boy to be healed in the name of Jesus. That's why you took the path that you took. That's why you made decisions that you made. God says, I've seen it all. I've, I've, I've watched you through your teeny years. I've watched the whole situation and I have never forsaken you. Now I've called your manservant to come tell you to be healed and to get up. This is the last call that I will make unto thee for you to be free from this and never go back. Jesus name. Come here, Angela. Give me some oil, please, sir. I need a praying church. Where, where's Pastor Damon? Where is he? Pastor, where are you? Come, come here, sir, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me say this, this is a very special, this is very special, very important. For you, my dear, this is what the Lord says to you. You are not your own. You belong to me completely. I have allowed you to work in other vineyards. I have allowed you to work in the industry on every level. This moment is not going to be like the rest of them. I will no longer allow you to fit in to old circumstances, old shoes, old boots. When I say that, I'm not talking physical. I'm talking the places that you used to be. This, what I preached about is concerning you as well, that God has closed down doors. He's shut people out of your life for a reason, for a purpose. If you want to go back, you want to be a part with them, but God said that season of your life is over. That is done. That was the prepping stage for where I'm taking you to. God said, I'm ready to pass the baton to you, but your feet have been dragging. Your feet have been dragging. Your feet have not been in the place that I really want them to be. And so I sent my manservant to come and help you get up from where you are. The place that I'm calling you to is mighty. The place I'm calling you to is great. The place that I'm calling you to is of leadership. It is of capacity that you have never experienced before. You have never seen this before. You have never seen what I'm getting ready to do in your life. And you can't dance in Egypt and dance in the temple. In other words, what I had for you in Egypt was for you to learn what was in Pharaoh's house. That you might bring it to God's house. That you you might be able to speak those oracles and use that same system to build the house of God. I came to share with you to tell you that the man that you're standing next to is a mighty man of God. I came to tell you that, that God has a special prophetic call on his life. I came to let you know that that man of God has an extreme calling on his life and that he's been praying earnestly for you. He's been praying. He has been speaking into your spirit. Some things he's never told you because he didn't want to offend you. He didn't want you to feel that as if he was coming against you. So he silently prayed about it because God is taking him to a place of leadership bigger than where he is and in order for him to be where God has called him to be his rib has got to be in place he has been exasperating for air not being able to breathe properly in the spirit because his rib was not in place and he was trying to do it but he can't do it without you he doesn't want to lead without you he doesn't want to go where God has taken him because he wants you to be by his side and God said I want you to get up and I want you to get in place those days are over I will set your feet in the right place. Don't worry about enemies or frenemies. I have covered that. 
I will establish you and make your name great. It will not be by the paths of old. The Lord told me to tell you, Pastor Damon, that God is getting ready to pass you the baton. Getting ready to pass you the baton. You will go further than anybody has ever gone. Get ready. You're getting ready to travel around this country. You're getting ready to be on television. There's some books that you have down in your spirit that God said that have to be written. There's some things that are unorthodox and God doesn't want you to put your ministry in a box. He said, I want you to do it the way I told you. Don't worry about who hears it or forbears it. I will take care of that. This is your moment. I'll take care of the house. I'll take care of the finances. I take care of everything. I just want your spirit and your mind to be in the right place. I will send the help. In Jesus' name. Somebody give God a praise. As I get ready to close, I can't do all of this today. This is the thing that the Lord showed me. Now, I just told you about honoring God when you come to the house of God. The Lord told me to tell everyone under the sound of my voice, if he allowed you to be here, this is for you. Many folks in this house have not honored God properly. And the Lord told me to do it this way. And I didn't know that he was going to give me the opportunity to do it this way. But now he has shown me that this is what I want you to do. So I'm going to obey God and do it. First, before I do anything else, I'm going to call for these people. There's some of you that are in this room right now. And I, know, I don't say this to embarrass you. I say this in love. We all have gotten off the track. Every one of us. At one point in life, we've all gotten off the track. But there's some of you in this room that have not been faithful in your tithing. There's some business people in this room that God blessed you in your company, in your business. And you used your growth, your growth in your business to satisfy other things instead of giving to God like you were supposed to. And God has been talking to you, speaking to you about, you need to do this, you need to get back on track. You haven't been doing it, you haven't been doing it. You owe me, you, back through the year you haven't been taking care of it. God said, I want you to come right now. I want, this is, this is I'm, I'm gonna call for tithing offering, but this is different. This is for the people have not been being faithful in it. Don't worry about people looking at you. Forget them. Don't worry about this. This is about you being a deliverance. Pastor Bishop, come stand next to me, please. I want you to stand right in front of me. 